Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the in-depth series. My name is Pooja Devi. Today we are going to discuss sickle cell anemia. What are sickle cell diseases? Where they are prevalent? Can they be treated or not? What is India doing with respect to treating sickle cell anemia or the sickle cell disease? By the picture I have behind me, you might have noticed I am going to talk about red blood cells first. So, First of all, let us discuss the many things that first we have to see. Sickle cell anemia is finding a mention in the budget of this year. The budget says that India wants to combat it immediately, but it is pretty challenging as it is a gene disease, genetic disease. So, how did it get discovered? In 1910, a physicist, James Hendrick, he was studying red blood cells from a student and he noticed that there is something unusual about this red blood cell. The student belonged to Granada, Spain. Now anemia basically what is this? Anemia is a situation when the blood is unable to carry proper oxygen to the body because of either lack of red blood cells or dysfunctional red blood cells. In sickle cell anemia and sickle cell disease, the red blood cells become dysfunctional. So when James Herrick was studying this student's RBCs, he thought that there is something unusual about this red blood cell. Generally red blood cells are donut shaped and they have a dent, okay, dent in between the red blood cells. But what happens in sickle cell, the red blood cells become C-shaped. This red blood cell carries oxygen to our blood and important parts of the body. But if the red blood cells are unusual in nature, it is very uh, consequent that oxygen will not be able to flow through, through our body with the help of our blood that easily. So this is what the beginning of red blood cell you know, being distorted is. So hemoglobin is tasked with carrying oxygen to all the parts of the body. It has four protein subunits in which there are two alpha and two beta. Now in certain people, mutation in the gene creates beta subunit impact that actually have an impact on the blood cell. And when the mutation is there in the B, two beta subunit, what happens? The donut shaped red blood cell becomes sickle shaped like C shaped. Okay, sickle red blood cells end up slowing and even blocking the blood flow. As you can see, this is the normal flow, but sickle cells do not, they start colliding with each other or intersecting each other and what happens because of that, there is blockage. So, oxygen will not be able to flow to the parts of the body. Moreover, sickle cells also die early. If sickle cells die early, that means no oxygen and that leads to chronic anemia, pain, fatigue, acute chest syndrome, stroke and a host of other serious health complications. If not treated on time, it could be fatal. In India, let us see from where did we find our first or the beginning of sickle cell anemia, sickle cell disease. It all started around 1952 when researchers H. Lehman and Mari Kadbush, they were studying tribal population of the Nigiri Hills. It is, it is observed that Tribes do have a lot of cases of sickle cell anemia. The presence of the sickle hemoglobin was also reported around this time in tea garden workers of Upper Assam where we could see migrant labors from Bihar and Odisha. Research and screening programs have found that the prevalence of, there was a prevalence of hemoglobinopathies which is a disorder of the blood and here it is more common among the tribal population than the non-tribal communities in India. Interestingly, it is prevalent in communities residing in areas where malaria is endemic. Malaria is a vector-borne disease. That means it has something to do with blood. Can you connect the facts? Where malaria is prevalent, it the body in order to evolve and survive through malaria, it started evolving its own red blood cells so that the malaria cannot be carried to the body easily. So that is why sickle cell shape of 
सिकल सेल शेप ऑफ रेड ब्लड सेल्स इवॉल्व फ्रॉम द जनरल रेड ब्लड सेल दोनों अच्छे रेड ब्लड सेल those with the trait there also have been studies those with the trait in some african countries that were found to be potentially resistant to lethal forms of malaria so because of this new evolution in red blood cells malaria could be survived by many tribal communities and this is providing an evolutionary advantage offering immunity to some people during the malaria epidemics now in india states and union territories with tribal population they contribute a significant part a malaria case load and additionally the documented prevalence of sca is higher in communities that practice endogamy because in endogamy as this is a genetic issue so the father and mother who both are the carriers of sickle cell red blood cell they will of course have a progeny with the same condition okay so where endogamy is practiced where both the parents are having sickle cells that's going to happen now this is a genetic disorder so completely eliminating it is a big challenge two two therapies are there two cures we can say are there gene therapy and stem cell transplant and these both are in development stage nascent baby stage and they both are very costly in gene therapy the dna inside the hemoglobin gene is edited and then it is you know it is expected that it will stop the disease in stem cell transplants the bone marrow which is affected by the sickle cell anemia is replaced with healthy bone marrow from a donor but the problem is how to find such donors that you know supply of donors is also less and these interventions are currently being tested tested in clinical stage only can in clinical trial stage only so it's not a for sure done thing blood transfusion is another therapy we can do wherein red blood cells are removed from donated blood and given to a patient but that has its own risk risk of infection risk of the cleanliness of the blood and many other things moving on what india has done so far the icmr indian council of medical research and national rural health mission in different states and union territories are having outreach program to mitigate and regularize the disease the ministry of tribal affairs launched a portal wherein people with the same disease can register themselves so that policy making can be easier but people are fearful that their privacy will be obstructed the national health mission guidelines on hemoglobin neuropathies say that establishing services at the community level for premarital and preconception screening backed by genetic counseling services as a strategy for addressing sickle cell anemia in which genetic counselor will ensure that both the parents if they have sickle cell disease they can be informed that their progeny will have the same thing so what can be the alternative is also suggested to them so this kind of counseling is also provided then in the budget of this year the union health minister said that the government plans to distribute special cards across tribal areas to people below the age of 40 and the funding for this will be done under national health mission again people are fearful that if they have this card they will be stigmatized as the carrier of this disease a case was also reported in which the woman says that her father did not tell that she has sickle cell disease to the family of her husband because the father was afraid that she would be stigmatized and nobody would marry her so how to overcome this that also becomes a social challenge if you have any answers to this how to overcome it as a social challenge you can comment in the comment segment that's it thank you so much for watching